in a three and a two. Rup, 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 all drag race. Well, hello there, kittens. Hi. It's Sunday, March 7th, 2021, and welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race, Season 13, Episode Number 9, known as Snatch Game. Sorry. Yeah. That, that probably should have been more dramatic, but it wasn't. Just like the episode probably should have been better, but it wasn't. So, you know. <laughs> girl you are already already with this just saying for those of you that don't know uh hi welcome to the podcast welcome to the show my name's gary and with me is my ever illustrious fabulous co-host over here <laughs> hello everyone it's damon welcome to the show um that bitch though like <laughs> okay. she's not like, ready to have hers <laughs> I think somebody's ready. Like you have been, you were, you were like, ooh, I already started off with the jokes. When did well, it like? When did it like? Wait, let me let me just let me just do this real quick. There we go. Now I have a fascinating. No, that's not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to like really quick, like while the shit, like the music was playing, I was like, I really need to find something really quick to work as a fascinator. There's a bunch of candles and shit around me, but nothing that would really like, unless I like sat there and held it. I'm like, oh, that's that's cute. But that's true. I'm looking around and I'm like, I don't really think I have anything that that qualifies necessarily. Like, here we go. Hold on. Oh, girl. <laughs> oh, honey. <laughs> okay. Here we go. My my my. <laughs> All right. So. uh Shall we get into to discussing the latest episode of Drag Race? Let's do it. Okay. Gentlemen, start your engines and may the best woman win. All right. So put the pedal to the metal, hunties. Overall thoughts on the episode. It is the snatch game. It is considered or has been considered the penultimate of performances in the season because the queens have to impersonate a person or a Concept. character. Yeah. But it cannot have IP issues. Trademarks, so mm -hmm. on and so forth. So it gets a little touchy because some queens have talked about how they want to do a certain thing and then they're not allowed. Like, I don't think you could do anything that's a cartoon character. So you can't do Betty Boop. You can't do, uh, you know, Mickey Mouse, you know, Bugs mm -hmm. Bunny. So you kind of have to go a little different um, mm -hmm. with that. I will say uh, in the pit stop, the Bob the Drag Queen and Trixie Mattel half hour show. Yes. Girl, that was funny. Uh-huh. And I was greatly intrigued by their discussion about how some queen should do Jesus Christ someday. <laughs> and I thought about it while they were talking and I was like, oh, no. I imagine Wow would say, "No, no, cannot, no, no deities, no religious mm -mm. iconography, uh, uh, no Mary Magdalene, the minute, no, <laughs> nope." The minute, like, um, uh, Bob said that, I was like, "Ooh, I, ooh, I don't, I don't know, that might be a problem." Cause you, we know how some of these y'all y'all know, y'all know how some of these people are out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I and just just to spill a little like tea before we get into the episode, like I was repetitious, if that's a word, <laughs> regarding um, Simone playing Harriet Tubman. I was, I was. The minute she said it, I was like, uh, 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 uh. so uh, here, here's, here's my thing on her deciding to do Harriet Tubman. I was like, it's a choice. 
it's a challenging choice. And I thought it was going to go one of two directions. Mm -hmm. Either you're going to knock it out of the park or it's going to be a fucking disaster. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I think we got the third option, which was kind of the in between. Mm -hmm. It was not a disaster, but she also didn't like win snatch game with it. Yeah. Yeah. Like she, she she did, which the judges talk about later. She elevated a character into the modern time. Um, or maybe that was in the the Whatcha Packin? Because Michelle talks about how important it is to take the individual who's out of time and put him into mm. the modern time without making it awkward. No, I mm. do think that was Judges Panel, because she was talking about how Rose as Mary Queen of Scots. Yeah. Uh, modernized her, like brought her up from the, what was it, 1600s or whatever mm-hmm. to today. So we, you know, we thrust her four centuries forward, basically. Um, and Rose was able to like make, you know, context of stuff. Uh, but I do think like that was an interesting way of phrasing it because I was like, well, like, I don't know. I mean, you could go in a couple different directions. I mean, look at what like Bendelet Krem did. I mean, she took a fictional mm-hmm. character from uh, Downton Abbey mm-hmm. and played off like stupidity of not knowing what the modern technology yeah. stuff is. She was playing the actress playing the character, mm-hmm. which worked. It's a matter. Of <laughs> yeah. You know, we, it's, it's not the first one. I mean, Bob did Uzo Aduba playing her character from Orange is the New Black. Crazy like, ass, yeah. It, yeah. She didn't do Uzo Aduba. She, or, oh, God, I'm probably saying her name wrong, and I feel really bad about it. <laughs> but um, but that's kind of what she was doing. Like that, And we've seen that, you know. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I'll go all the way back to one of the first ones with um, um, Stacey Lane Matthews doing um, Monique doing Precious, his mother. Like mm. that wasn't that wasn't that wasn't Monique. <laughs> that was Monique playing Pre- Precious's mother, which uh, I don't know the name of the mother's character, but right. that's kind of where we were going with it. She was going right. with it, which was at the time, you know, twenty years ago. <laughs> Fuck, maybe not twenty, but you know, you get that I mean, right, right. Um, relevant because of the movie hadn't come out recently and all that stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I, so Ooh. I will say this. I think both of us are on the same track. Go ahead with your thoughts. I, Cause I have a mm-hmm. feeling we're going to kind of feel the same way about this episode. Yeah. So, um, a familiar turn in a race is what I said. And that's kind of how I feel about this. This was pretty much a very, we, we know snatch game. It always had, they always do it. Um, it's becoming, almost um i don't want to go to the link that candy went where like it 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 changes how you're perceived in the drag race community or drag queen community forever how well you do on snatch game she says something along those lines and i was just like eh, i don't know about that um it does put a marker on you in the contest though um i think denali kind of said something along those lines it is a make it or break it moment. And reality is once you get past snatch game, you're not in it, but you're in like the tops kind of in a way. So I'm kind of feeling that way about this. Um, It was a very, like very traditional snatch game. There were some high moments, some hilarious moments and there were some cringeworthy moments, and they were very cringeworthy. Um, I, um, why don't we go ahead and hit that spoiler alert? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hang on, let me. I can remember where's the button, where's the thing. I gotta, oh hell. <laughs> um, let's do this. Nope, that's not it. Maybe <laughs> this one. Why are you not working? Oh, don't be like that. 
Uh oh. No, it's okay. I gotta do it old fashioned way. There we go. So, um, yeah, if you haven't, if you've been this far, like spoiler alerts are now in effect. Um, <sighs> Utica. Um, I have so many things to say to that, but the first one is why. Um, why? Wh why? Um, I, d I don't. I just don't. I don't understand it. I don't know where you were going. I didn't get the jokes. I didn't get the comedy. I don't know how even you thought this was funny because um, it's just, it felt like bombs, like just dropping from the sky. And I, I, had, a, I had a moment, we were watching it live where I literally had to get up and like get away because <laughs> it was just so awful to watch. Um, I muted her on one occasion because it was just that bad. Like, I'm not joking, y'all. Like, it was, it wasn't even, it wasn't even a like car crash. It was like, it was a car, the car, the car had already crashed. The thing was on fire and it's just smoldering, like just there, like in the corner like, and it's just like, <sighs> y'all. And I'm going to go back to like early in the show. And I want to discuss something and I don't know quite how to put it, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm trying to understand where your mind was going with it, Utica, because I don't understand it. You chose not to wear an afro because you were concerned about how it would present. You didn't want to offend, what have you. So instead of an Afro, which by the way, Bob Ross had, Richard Simmons had, um, um, we've, we've seen like white folks with Afros. Like there's that whole, like, I mean, this is, sorry. It, there's the thing like Jufro, where like the Jewish like a Jewish hair kind of gets curly and it gets kind of like like that that moppy kind of like you know hair, so it's a thing. It now had you gone the wrong route with it, like stuck like an Afro pick with like the 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 black Afro pick with the fist and like stuck that shit in there and done something along those lines, yeah, might be a little mm, offensive. But just wearing an afro, um, no, not a problem. White folks have afros. We've seen it on the show. We've seen queens do it. Um, it, it I, 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 I respect your trep, you know, trepidation in, in, in wanting to do it. Mm -hmm. But instead of an afro made of hair, you went with a wig of squirrels, plush squirrels. So you didn't want to offend by wearing an afro. So instead, you're just going to offend by wearing a squirrel wig, like af like a squirrel thing made of, that makes it look like an afro. Like, do you not understand? <laughs> Like how that could potentially also be like a little offensive or a little odd instead of just like wearing an Afro wig or are are going the route that 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 um Tina went and done just like a big like curly wig. Like you could have done that. Well girl, like mm. <laughs> Okay, first of all, my 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 thoughts on Utica is that was a choice, um, which turned into we all have choices. Some of us make the wrong ones. Uh, bringing up Tina and her wig, 
I'm sorry. It annoyed the fuck out of me. I mean, true. I was like, girl, that's not an Afro wig. Yeah. I mean, true. It's a drag queen wig. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, drag queen wig. Like, mm -hmm. it was weird to me watching Tina wearing that wig. It was distracting me. Like, I mean, the, from... the performance was distracting to me. Oh, that part didn't bother me too much. Like, I thought she was giving the essence of Richard Simmons. Um, the Part of my issue is just you're too damn tall. Mm. Um, but, you know, the gag with the fake legs was, actually, mm -hmm. was, was amusing to me. I was not expecting <laughs> puppet whatever. <laughs> puppet legs to just, like, <laughs> pop out of nowhere. I know. Yeah. I mean, um, I will admit that was kind of funny. But, yeah, like, the, when I saw the hair, I was like, what are you – wearing i was like no girl you should have a six head not a forehead not a five head a six head and it should be an afro like a light brown you know yeah but no yeah. she so yes i agree um so i kind of wonder if utica has done the bob ross thing on stage like dressed mm -hmm. as bob ross and has like some mix or something and does this funny skit Mm -hmm. all of this character that like kind of goes in and out of things and like contextually yeah. is more funny that that if that's really the case and i don't know this if that's the case this is a lesson to all the future queens do not take something you do on stage and bring it to snatch game if yeah. you can't embody the character and be funny because as yeah. bob the drag queen was pointing out to trixie which i thought was a good educational moment Comedy is not comedy is not comedy is not comedy. Like, yeah. you can be funny at one thing or several things, but that does not mean you're funny at everything. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was the biggest message, the biggest delivery that, that Bob gave is very sage and wise advice was to say, like, just because you're funny on stage on a microphone doesn't mean you're going to be funny at Snatch Game. Just because mm -hmm. you're good at being quick and witty does it mean that you can personify a character and continue that? Yeah. Um, you know, just because you're a good actor doesn't mean you're going to be good at Snatch Game. I mean, there's there's so many variables. Yeah. And Trixie admitted, like, how hard it is to be a character. And she did the same thing that I was just referencing to. She kept imitating Rue on uh the mm -hmm. series like she kept using her catchphrase or whatever and thought it was funny and because people were amused by it she decided to take it and run with it however y'all did this shit was said <laughs> right gave her false hope uh -huh. so she so she presented that on all stars and bombed but mm -hmm. as we have found all stars the very first or sorry snatch game the very first time is like the 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 most significant like trial by fire there can be mm -hmm. in terms of like coalescing a lot of different skills and if you don't make it to snatch game in a regular season and you come back for all stars like so for example tamisha iman mm -hmm. she's a high candidate for a future all-star season true but she didn't make it a Snatch Game. So while she has the luxury of presenting a character for the very first time on Snatch Game, she is at the deficit of mm -hmm. having never experienced Snatch Game. And that's what happened to Trixie, because Trixie admitted on my season, like, I didn't, we didn't make it to Snatch Game. So she had no idea what the experience was like, but she was super excited to do it. And then she learned that she didn't like it. A very it was... bad lesson. You learned, you learned that very quickly. And right. the also, the other lesson you learn is sometimes what may have worked in the beginning doesn't work in the second time around, um, a la Tatiana and, and Ariana Grande. Mm. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, it's, <sighs> Snatch Game in and of itself has always been a a a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I understand why they keep doing it and using it, both in the regular season and in All-Stars. Because it is a very, despite the simpleness of it, like portray a, a famous person or not a famous person or just put, portray someone else mm -hmm. that's not you and make them funny it's in that simplicity lies its difficulty right because 
one, you have to portray a character well enough that people understand who you're portraying or an actor, you know, whoever. Right. And then two, you then have to come up with ways to make them funny and provide ways to make someone particularly, especially, not particularly, especially Rue, laugh. Right. Um, I will admit I was concerned a little bit for, I mentioned Simone. That was when I was concerned with. I was definitely concerned about that. I was concerned about Tina during her interview with Rue, just based on how they were interacting. Mm. And I was concerned about Olivia. Um, Olivia was essentially playing someone who is rel- I, relative, I will say relatively new mm-hmm. in the like genre, in the world, you know, being as popular as she is. No, don't get me wrong. I know who she is. Um, once they showed the picture, I knew who she was. But I, you know, I don't know if everyone knows who she is yet. Like, it's one of those things. She's not right. universal. It's not a Paris Hilton. It is not a, a right. Kim Kardashian. It's, it's, it's a no name, mm-hmm. but not a, like, to me, I will say not a well, well-known name. That when you mention names, someone goes, oh, I know who that is. Right. Although the panel apparently did, which seemed kind of weird. That everyone in the judge panel was like, oh, I know her. I was like, okay. Well, what I found <laughs> it was interesting was that Rue didn't know who uh-huh. Tabitha Brown is. But immediately Michelle's like, I know who she is. I really enjoy her. And then calls out. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. And blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Oh, Michelle got receipts. Like she, she's <laughs> ready to tell you in like critiques where you where you fell short." Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. Um, and on the flip of that, um, you always have to be careful about portraying someone who is well known, a la Elliot with Rue McClanahan, aka Blanche, like. That's let's just put it, put it, put it where it is. We knew what she was doing. <laughs> she wasn't Rue McClanahan. She was being Blanche. Like, let's let's call it what it is. <laughs> true. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> that was a choice. <laughs> Gary, how about you? Um, I said classic Snatch Game. And by that, I mean we got everything that we get out of every other Snatch Game. Mm-hmm. We get some really good surprising performances. We get some, like, bombing disasters. Um, You know, it, it felt like any other episode of Snatch Game to me. I wasn't blown away. I also wasn't disgusted. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, disappointed a little bit i will say this um i want to give it up for pork chop being the other contestant <laughs> victoria pork chop parker coming back as the other contestant and my favorite part is because i don't know how much this was a gag or legit she was not on the set when they were ready to start and she comes in late and i was like what in the good grace of what uh, what is going yeah. on here like uh-huh and they rolled I with it it was like yeah. uh, i i would have loved it if he had said something along the lines like they sent me to the pork chop lounge and i was there for a minute and then they were like wait you need to move over here i would have died <laughs> that's true that probably would have been a great way and i'm surprised benton and them didn't like you know feed her a line on that or something and set her up you know to talk about the the loading dock and then you know so yeah, that was that was that was a fun like thing. And I like seeing her on. She gave really great face. Like the amount of times the camera cut to her reacting to the queens and what was happening, I was like, ooh, she is not poker facing I mean, at all. I mean her face can move though. Uh, Raven's face could move. 
I think. <laughs> it kind of moves on, like, mm-hmm. Fashion Photo Review. Okay. Isn't it? I think. Anyways. Um, yeah, like, I mean, uh, to, so to me, it was a kind of classic uh, thing. I will say this. I am in agreement with Bob and Trixie. Um, not to keep talking about Pestop, but um, Candy Muse was Candy Muse on Snatch Game. In a turban. In a shitty in looking a- turban. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> not impressed. I, okay. So, y'all, okay. So, one of the things in regards to Snatch Game, okay, is you need to pick a character that you can portray, and that character then needs to be funny. Like, we talked about this earlier, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't help or hurt when you essentially are yourself on Snatch Game in like a character mm-hmm. in a in a person. And that's what I feel we got with Candy. I've seen Patrick Starr. I've watched Patrick Starr's videos on, on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, this was not Patrick Starr. Um, they're white they're funny and they're they're I will I will own their their little probably a little bandy a little like you know kind of hoodie but that's okay because it works mm. see they're having fun with what they're doing and we know now like they've they've put out um um a makeup line and or you know have have like a brand one size if you've heard of it um and that seems to be going well, but I I don't see I don't think of uh, Patrick Starr as this mumbly, bumbly, like hungry, like mess that we got. Mm. Like that didn't feel like Patrick to me. Granted, I've, you know, it's not like I like know them or, or, you know, have watched every single video they've done or any of that shit. Right. But did the look work? Yeah, kind of. Um, kind of. Um, but that's really it. And the fact that, that Candy like wore makeup and, and had makeup on the, 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 was playing with it. That was about the extent of her being Patrick Starr. Mm. From when her mouth <clears throat> opened up, it was candy. Right. <clears throat> well, and this is where I think it gets a little challenging with Snatch Game because while you are impersonating another person, you're actually exaggerating the character to like a high comedy kind of level. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for example, Simone doing Harriet Tubman. Like the gag with the money and the stamp, mm-hmm. I thought was a funny pop culture reference because that's a legit thing that people were doing. Mm-hmm. Was taking, you know, a a actual piece of money and defacing it with a stamp of Harriet Tubman over top, mm-hmm. like as a political statement for currency. Um, so I I mean like you know and and like. Like, I honestly thought she was a little borderline in trouble because I was thinking about her portrayal and I was like, wow, she really is kind of um, skating to the edge of almost insult. Like, and and this isn't a criticism, but I was it was really crafty because she even made a comment. What was it? She said, you know, this bald headed black man got all these questions. (laughs) Uh And I was Uh like. (laughs) <laughs> I was like, oh, she she just went there, like came for Mama Roo in the most like <laughs> sly, like contextually it, witty. I was like, mm-hmm. but Damn. I thought you could have gone too far. You know what I mean? Like, 
Um, yeah, like like I I think I will I will say it now. I feel like Rue during Snatch Game, in particular, is I I want to say okay, but is good with the little like like back and forth banter, insulting right. her in some ways. And it like you said, that was that was it was there. If something had like if 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 another word had been said, like, you know, if she had said motherfucker or something like that, like it might have been off. <laughs> like <laughs> Rue might have had a moment. We might have seen some of that Rue, that true Rue that we get some every now and then where where the where the where like the camera comes off and she's like, oh. And it's entirely possible that that was what we also got, like when the cameras were off. But <laughs> right, I mean, like the the line she didn't cross is as Harriet Tubman. She didn't come at ruin and make another comment on along the lines of, you know, instead of fracking, perhaps you should be like doing something to conserve the environment or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. so she didn't impinge on her character. Like, yeah, you know, she didn't like try to come and assassinate her, but. That was a moment where I was like, this bitch is crazy. Like, she just mm -hmm. insulted the host, like, through comedy. But I think Rue understood it, like, like found that funny um, mm -hmm. in that moment. So, yeah. So, I mean, so overall, I think it was a kind of a classic Snatch game. Um, it was nice to see Raven. Of course, Raven looked perfect. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, so, like, snatched and bronzed mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. like, painted, like, to, you know, heaven. I mean, she, I thought the headdress was a bit extreme. I was like, okay, girl, we get it. You're a drag queen. But, like, what are we, <laughs> what are we trying to do here? Like, are you auditioning to be a Vegas showgirl? I don't understand. Um, That part kind of threw me off or whatever. And I did find it funny at the end that uh, Porkchop <laughs> won. <laughs> yeah. Um. That was hilarious because of the whole like they came when they came into it, they were all like, um, Raven made the joke of you know I've never I I've you know always never won I've always been second place I've never been a winner here, and they kind of like went with that and I was like yes do that because they normally never have a winner at snatch game right it's usually who wins nobody right like it, go cares? the fuck home like yeah <laughs> like, get the fuck out of here yeah. One yeah. of those moments, but to actually have a winner, and not only that, like like someone gives pork chop like flowers and shit. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. It was it was a fun moment, and Victoria is really good about like seeing the humor and the ridiculousness of it. I mean, mm -hmm. to be fair, of all the queens in all the seasons, she is the queen who gets the most. Shout outs, callbacks, returns, like, and it's never about the competition. It is merely kind of like paying due for the fact that she was the very first queen to leave. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, it, it is, it's, it's actually, it, it's good. So, yeah. Ready to move on? Yes, let's. Okay. Have a girl, put the bass in your wall. wall, wall. All right, honeys, stomp the runway. Category is fascinating fascinators. Damn. <laughs> Girl, I can't with you. <laughs> I believe you have a definition uh, to discuss. Oh. oh. <laughs> or would at least like to educate the children about what a fascinator is and what a fascinator is not. Yes. So I put down fascinating choices mm -hmm. and I want the children to learn. So from Wikipedia. <clears throat> a fascinator is a formal headpiece for women, a style of millinery. Since the 1990s, the term has referred to a type of formal headwear worn as an alternative to a hat. It is usually a large decorative design attached to a band or clip. 
In contrast to a hat, its function is purely ornamental. It covers very little of the head and offers little to no protection from the weather. Okay. So that is a fascinator. Knowing that. <laughs> I think it's interesting to reflect on what people wore and whether or not they meet the definition. Truth. Yeah. Yes. There were some choices made. Some people. <clears throat> Tina Burner. Um, wore things that could be potentially considered a hat. Like let's let's not let's be honest, Miss Tina, um, with an ornament on it, or what we have learned is a hatinator, mm. um, which is a modern reference, um, which is a combination of the hat and the fascinator. So, uh, the. Sorry, There's, I'm I'm blanking uh, on what Tina wore all of a sudden. Why am I blanking? So on? she was the she was the like the Kentucky Derby horse. With like oh the, yes, 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 yes. The yes. brown with the the roses, and then like the cockeyed horse head. The thing. cockeyed horse head that I don't. Again, like I felt that was a hat. Like I'm just gonna I'll have to look at the pictures again. I want to watch Sprashy Photo Review. Let me get Raven and and Raja's like critique on it because, um, it looks to me. Like, it's a hat with a horse on it. Like, that's me. Mm. And I could be wrong. Could be wrong. I, I haven't watched the episode more than once. I only watched it one time this time. Because um, a lot has been going on this weekend. Um, so, it's entirely possible that it is a fascinator in the traditional sense of the word. Or a hatinator, if you want to go, like, middle of the road with it. Mm -hmm. But having said that, um, there are a few choices made that I was, I liked, and then there are a few that I was kind of like, eh, about. Um, some of the positives for me, um, got Mick, obviously. Like, I was a big fan of that, although I wouldn't really call that a, ha a fascinator as more of like a headpiece. Right. right. Like, I, will, I will, as much as I loved it, <laughs> And I did love it. It was a headpiece. It was not a fascinator. Mm -hmm. Like that's that that's sort of the difference too. Um, I like rosés. I thought that was a very beautiful like design that she chose. Um, I want her to get her out of this fucking ruffle moment. But this was a better option as michelle pointed out um sh show some figure but again like i don't i don't need everything of yours to be um three-dimensional hmm. okay rose like let's get that out of the head <laughs> that's fair um um and I, I, I love Simone's even before she turned around. Let me put that first. But again, again, that is a headpiece, Correct. not a fascinator. Correct. So I'm just trying to like, I'm, as much as I loved it, a, there's, a, there's a distinct difference between fascinator and headpiece. Right. So, yeah. That's fair. Mm hmm. Um, I also, yeah, I will, like, I, I will mention it. I've mentioned it a few times. Um, another headpiece that was not a, that was a, oops, you're on the wrong, I'm on the wrong doc. <laughs> Whoopsie. Uh, another um, headpiece was uh, Utica's. Bob clocked it in the in in pit stop. Mm. I know we keep going back to it, but there's a difference between a fascinator 
and an item like stuck on your head. Like if I did this, that's right. a candle on my head. That is not a fascinator. Even if I attached it <laughs> to this lovely headband piece, like maybe put it to the side or something like that, like that's still a candle on my head. Right. right. I had to. <laughs> no, I, I completely understand. I do not disagree with Bob's notion to just stick an object on your head does not make it a fascinator. Mm-hmm. So. Like... On the flip of that, I did appreciate um, Denali's. In a sense, mm -hmm. the coffee cup with the co like the coffee pouring into it, I thought that was kind of cute. <laughs> Gary, um, so I said new category, mixed results, mm. which is pretty much what you've been describing. Um, <laughs> I thought it was interesting that the criticism about Denali that has come about was Michelle says, this is an outfit that we would call costume. However, you sold it because of the fascinator, the plate of food and the rollerblading. Like you really delivered. The story is that you are a, car hop waitress you know mm -hmm. diner or whatever mm -hmm. like so i found that interesting that the that the the fine line weaving carving of the situation is like without these extra things without the fascinator without the plate of food without the the you know rollerblading aspect we would just call this a costume and i was like hmm and even trixie kind of like made reference she called out a couple of names of companies that like this it, it epitomizes like sexy waitress or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So I was like, well, oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah. So, yeah, like, I, I mean, I think it was kind of mixed results. Uh, I will. I don't disagree really with much of what you said um, in terms of like, you know, hatinators versus fascinators versus like headpieces. Um, Rosé, in essence, wore a Kentucky Derby hat. Um. You know, while it does go with the outfit, it was so large. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, is it really a fascinator? Is it a headpiece? And I think that's kind of the 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 fine line because it's drag. So things should be bigger. They should be bolder. They should, you know. And, and I think that's where, you know, this could be debated for eons on whether or yeah. not something really is a fascinator versus a headpiece, I guess. Yeah. It's, um, it's very interesting to ha figure out that difference. And... Um, I I was trying to think like the ones that I re I'm recalling in my head like I'm just like because I did the makeup on Elliot's and that very broad like I don't think it was feathers but it was like some kind of I feel like it was some kind of like styrofoamy colored you know thing we've seen it before I've seen it done before mm -hmm. uh, like almost pulled noodle or something along those lines Hmm. Um, it was very interesting and and I could see that being a fascinator but I'm also like it's it gets to, when it gets too big I think that's part of the problem mm. for me and I get that this is drag but I think the idea behind it is um a fascinator is meant to be an ornamental piece that's worn in the head. If you kind of right. go that route. Right. right. Um, it kind of weird. We're saying headpiece a lot and I'm kind of like, technically aren't all fascinators headpieces. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, I mean, I, I think you, your point is like, yeah. you know, what, like I think a fascinator is meant to be an extra item mm -hmm. to draw attention. But is it like, I think a headpiece is, is a statement. Mm hmm. Um, yeah. So, mm -hmm. like, got mix safety pin is a statement. Like, it's not a fascinator. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I I I don't know. Um. The thing about Simone's look. So I was kind of surprised with what she wore when she first presented. She come down the runway, and my immediate thought was, "Where the fuck are your hips?" 
girl, I'm getting a little tired of this, like, twiggy stick model, like, presentation you keep making. Especially when you wear an outfit like this. This outfit called for hips. Even though it was designed with, like, this kind of figure, the silhouette, you still didn't have hips. And that was bothersome to me. Like, I would have appreciated something to support this. Mm -hmm. That being said, um, when she turned around and walked away, she did make a really good statement. And as I was thinking about it while we're recording this tonight, I wish she had done more. I wish she had done more uh, of the red jewels for the bullets. I wished it had, like, dripped down onto the train of the dress and, like, made a large mm -hmm. pool. Like, I think it would have been a lot more dramatic. I'm not saying it was an afterthought, but mm -hmm. I think there was a lot more you could have done with that. Mm -hmm. um, or you could have had all the names that you said out loud written onto the back just, of the dress. Are just all the names that you know we we know that are you know being said or being ignored or what have you mm -hmm. it's i appreciate and i'll probably talk about it later um i felt it and i got it and i knew when when she turned around and it happened like it hit me very hard mm. um but i agree could there have been more yeah but we don't my my biggest the thing I've been trying to like tell myself and remind myself constantly, especially after last week's episode, is they did not have a lot of time. They didn't have nearly as much time right. as other queens have had in the past. So I I don't think it was an afterthought. I I believe, and this is just me talking out my ass. I don't know Simone. I don't know your life, but I bet. This was one of the things Simone has said and Olivia mentioned in and Tamisha mentioned in the um, show last week um, that they were going to be using this platform essentially as a platform for the movements. Um, with that, though, how much time did they have? Mm. Really, like if I'm, I'm trying to remember the the documentary episode, and I think they only had a few months, if that. And you had all the COVID stuff going on at the time, mm -hmm. um, so it's entirely possible. And this is just me, you know, spitballing here, that she put that on her onto herself. Right. She didn't have time. She didn't have a design. She maybe had a designer make the dress right. and build the dress, but then she put that onto herself and she didn't have like time to do everything that I feel like she could have done. Right. right. I agree with you. Like if this had been a different year, like if it had been 2020, let's just, just be honest with everyone else. If it hadn't been 2020, I bet she would have and probably did would have done more to it, added more bullets. So, because if he had turned around and there had been like six, seven like bullets or something like that, just the match, like the impact there would have been good. Mm -hmm. It could have been nine for the nine minutes kind of thing, like as a kind of throwback. That would have been like even more powerful. But again, we don't know how much time they had. Right, right. So, but. Yeah, I agree. Like, good statement could have been a little better. Positive statement, powerful statement, but could have been better and probably would have been better if it hadn't been a COVID year. Right. Yeah. Woo. Okay. You ready to move on? Yes. All right, children. So snaps and eye rolls. 
the hits and the misses, aka the highs and the lows of the episode. Damon, who are you giving snaps to? So I'm not going to say much more because I literally just started talking about this like two seconds ago. Uh, But Simone's message Mm -hmm. um, on her dress, um, a very powerful moment. I appreciate the judges responding to it when she was safe and telling her about it, like Rube mentioning it specifically. Mm -hmm. Um, T.S. Madison coming into the work room and mentioning it too. It was um, a very, again, powerful, positive like statement and I am glad Simone is choosing is one of the queens that I have seen consistently choosing this platform mm. to spread like black positivity. Right. So um I'm not gonna go into much because I've already kind of <laughs> gone into it, but that's kind of where my snaps go for this episode. It was one of the few moments that I actually starred and loved in the, when I wrote my notes down. So, okay. That. Gary? Uh, I am going to give snaps to the one and only T.S. Madison. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Great judging this episode. Mm-hmm. To see her behind the judges panel, I was like, Oh, 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 somebody came to Drag Race as a drag queen. I see how it is. (laughs) So the reason why I say that is, of all the judges over all the seasons, I think this is, like, the first time I've ever seen a judge look like a drag queen, and it fits. Like, Mm -hmm. it, it works, it makes sense, and I was quite happy about that because... I'm getting tired of judges, guest judges showing up, not being funny, not connecting with the queens, not giving good feedback, like not being a part of the family. Like it's just, you know, mm-hmm. there was that recent thread <laughs> online about who the worst judges have ever been on, <laughs> on Drag Race and all the series. Um, and there were a lot of names pointed out. It was like, why was this person here? What was going on? And who thought this was appropriate? Like, a lot of stuff like that. So I was yeah. very happy to see TS there. And she gave really good feedback. And I loved her all the more when she pulled, a, a like, the infamous Gaga moment and, like, walks into the workroom, talks to the queens for a little bit, you know, and, and, and notably says, you know, this is COVID times. So, like, I'm going to sit over here. And I loved how all the queens, like, suddenly picked up chairs and stuff and stood and, like, came over and kind of like made a little audience to talk with mm-hmm. her for, for a little bit. And I think it went obviously longer than what we saw. Yeah. What was edited, but I really appreciated that they talked. And I was really happy that TS gave a shout out to Gottmik about like trans representation and the importance mm-hmm. of that. Um, so like, I just, you know, I've been aware of TS Madison for a few years and she has a new television show that's coming out. Uh, and I was like, you go, girl. Like, you know, do do all the things. Uh, and I, I'm i hopeful, you know, that she continues to be successful. And I just, uh, I don't know. Like, it just, it really spoke to me in this particular episode. And someone else pointed out something interesting. Where did this come from? I don't Ooh. think this was on Pit Stop. Someone was making reference that all of the guest judges so far have been people of color this season. Let me think about it. <laughs> so Jamal Sims, mm-hmm. T.S. Madison, Nicole Byer. Mm-hmm. I can't think of the other ones. I don't they've, think there's been anyone else. They've repeated. Yes. Um, because of COVID specifically. So I'm trying huh. to look real quick and see if I can see who all the judges were. Uh, I don't know if we have a judges thing. It might be on the wiki. It's, kind it's of usually on the Wikipedia. Looking at. Guest judges. Yeah. Oh, Lonnie Love. Jeffrey Boyer Chapman. Yeah. Well, yeah. Whatever. Was he a uh, guest judge? No, cameo uh, he appearance. He was just a guest. He was just a special yeah. guest. Nicole Byer, Lonnie Love, Nicole Byer again, Miguel Zarate. 
So there's a, a guest. So, Lonnie Love is a so, guest judge. So there's guest judges and there's special guests. So these are people who have right. just appeared on episodes but not um, didn't judge. Right. Um, but the guest judges, yes, especially considering who they have listed. I, I don't. I didn't. I don't know when she's coming, but I can't wait when she does. <laughs> um, Cynthia Revo, y'all. Um, I'm gonna have a moment. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, um, but yeah, they're all like the guest judges. The ones that we have listed here are all people of color. Hmm. So Lonnie Love is back next week. Mm-hmm. And next week's episode is Freaky Friday Queens. Mm. Apparently the synopsis says it's Freaky Friday. The queens are challenged to make each other into their own drag doppelgangers. Mm-hmm. Comedian yeah. and host Lonnie Love, guest judges psychic Shar Margolis makes an appearance. Interesting. Um. Yeah, and let me go back up because I saw the listing of the upcoming episodes. Where are you at? Where are you at? You're hiding from me. Yeah, so episode... Ah, where'd you go? Episode 10 this coming week is Freaky Friday Queens. And then the week after that, episode 11 is apparently Pop Goes the Queens is the title. That's on the 19th. Mm. Don't know much else about that, but interesting. So yeah, um, so someone had pointed out, you know, that all the guest judges were people of color, and how like important that was, and uh, whether or not that was a strategy. I don't know if that was so much strategy. I think it was mostly, as we've been discussing, because some guest judges keep coming back. I think these are judges that are LA based, and they are in the bubble, like. They're either part of the production bubble and they're just not leaving and going anywhere because they're going to be judging like mm -hmm. maybe three episodes of the season. Um, that kind of a thing. So, you know, they're they're changing it up a little bit. But, you know, normally we do not see a guest judge repeatedly in the same season. Correct. But I'm not I'm not mad about it at the moment because I don't feel like any of the guest judges are. I don't know how to say it. I don't feel like any of them are dipshits. Yeah. You know, where I'm just like, what? why the hell are you here? Yeah. So, yeah. Agreed. I, I feel that way too. I think it's been, yeah. I, I, I mean, it's obviously related to COVID. Like let's, let's, let's just call it what it is. It is obviously related to COVID. Right. So it's not as bad, but it's good in a sense because most of the time, you know, the guest judge comes in and usually all they've gotten is that little moment. Like they get the runway in a, if there's a, like a performance, they'll either watch the video or the performance or it'll be in front of them as well. Right. And that's all they get. This time around, you have judges who have seen in some ways a few different episodes Mm -hmm. Or maybe all of them, for all we know. We don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of maybe knowing what's going on. Um, so would it work? will it work in the future? I don't know. But for this, it works tremendously because it gives, it gives the ju guest judges a little bit more nuance, mm. flavor. I want to use the word flavor. <laughs> well, it is as we get into the last episodes of the season, if the the guest judges keep repeating, the last time we see a guest judge, they will have seen the queens at least twice, if not three times. And Fair. that will probably be really good. I'll be paying more close attention to their feedback. And if they talk about the changes or the evolution of any of the performers, like yeah. and how they can see that, because you, you only get that really from like Rue and Michelle Carson and, and Ross. Like, mm -hmm. they're about the only ones that might be able to see that, that kind of evolution. That being said, who are you eye rolling at this week, David? What am I eye rolling? Mm. Um, so, this was just a minor thing that just I happen to write down and I saw because I saw it a couple of times. Um, 
can we get these queens some some wig caps? Like, so in particular, they're getting ready for, I think it's either, no, it's the following day. They're getting ready for elimination day. And I'm watching the girls get ready. And it's the first one I see is Denali. And like, she's got this wig cap on and you can see these holes in the back of it with clearly her hair coming out of it. And it wasn't the first one I've seen. And I'm just like, like, girl. <laughs> go to the 99 cent store and buy a bunch of fucking wig caps. <laughs> like, it ain't that hard. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's like, again, I, I, I it, Denali's was the first one I saw that I was just like, ooh, ma'am. Like, it had two holes in it. Yes. I clocked it the two moment I saw it. I was like, hole. I was like, <laughs> okay, listen, I get that you spent a lot of money to get here. Uh huh. Outfits, all the rest <laughs> of that stuff, props, you name it. That said, Girl, you ain't got a pair of tights you could use to like. I know, right? Like, <laughs> cut up a pair and just like throw a fucking like do something. <laughs> and 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 if it's just you, like if it's if it's if it's like my lucky wig cap, like I, I you know queens are like that. Some people are like that. They 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 it's the the thing they're they're used to. They know what they know. Like maybe those two holes have a purpose. Like she typically pins. It, I'm 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 spitballing because I don't it, it makes no sense to me, <laughs> <laughs> but like she knows I can pin right here because that's where my two holes are and I know my wig will be secure right fucking there. I don't know anyway. Yeah. It just it caught me off guard. It caught me and I it bothered me to the point that I wrote it down and started because I was just like, why, why? Yep. Yeah. Like. Big production, what have you. If there's if they need to like supply their own wig caps, like mama, like come on. 99 cent. Get a pack of five. <laughs> like <laughs> ask the production crew to go buy you some. If 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 it's a thing, like I don't, you know, like if if you have to provide your own, like my wig cap has a hole in it. Can I get some more? Write it on the note. Slide it under the door. Can you please provide me some wig caps? <laughs> my, my cap is holy. Like, just something. Because it just... Because <laughs> I know the wig cap. I know wig caps. They're cheap. They're cheap. And even... like I don't know if there are expensive ones out there because I've never experienced like ones that are what made of silk? I don't, I don't fucking know because right. I don't think anyone wants to would think to put a make a wig cap expensive wig cap. It's a wig cap. No one ever sees it. It, it is there for a reason. It well, is they're the not whole... supposed to see it. Yes, true. I mean, some yeah. But like, 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 no one. It, it, it's like a bra. Like, yeah, you might wear, like, a really expensive bra because someone's going to see it. Or you might be a cheap hoe and get, like, the 99-cent granny panties and bustier because you you know no one's going to see it because they're going to be under stuff. It's an undergarment. Wig caps are usually right. not meant to be seen. Right. So, <laughs> like, like, Get some get some fucking wig caps, y'all. <laughs> like, like either if if it's the production that's supposed to provide them, which who knows, then okay, like well, brew, get on it. Like the, right. The reason I said about the production helping is my impression from Willem is that you can ask for things. Mm -hmm. Like you can like like when it comes to meals and different mm -hmm. stuff. But like if you need something, my understanding is you can ask the staff if they're able to go get it for you. So, like, to go ask them to go buy a wig cap, I think, is the least 
mm-hmm. like cost minimal thing that they could like kind of do. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, Mama, ninety nine cent store. You can get a pack of five. Maybe six. You might be lucky. Even if you got one for a dollar, I mean, at least I mean, you got true. a replacement. <laughs> you got an extra. <laughs> Fuck. God, wear no holy ass shit. Like, come on. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It just, it irked me to the point where I was like, what's going on? Mm. And I could be wrong. I could be, it, I could be mistaken. It could be, again, lucky. It could be a thing that she does. It could just be the way it is. That's, that's, that's fine. And, it, I mean, it could have been just circumstance. Like, that mm-hmm. it, it was fine when she put it on. And then, I don't know, she poked it with her nail or whatever uh-huh. twice. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and, unfortunately, it got on camera that she's got, you know, a holy weight gap. I don't know. She poked it twice in the same place. Maybe she got an itch. Maybe she needed like a, she dug like a pencil in there. Like I need an itch right there. Or anyway. a rat tail comb or something. Uh huh. Like, uh huh. You know, just get like in there. Grind into her brain. I don't know. Get that. Get in there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Okay. Gary, what about you? Okay, so what I wrote. And apparently when I wrote this, I was very passionate because it is in all caps. Y'all. Uh-huh. I said, did y'all practice with two question marks? And I'm listening to you and I'm reading ahead and I'm like, I don't remember what this is about. <laughs> Ooh. But Uh-oh. here's the thing. I'm kind of blanking on the episode. Like, I'm remembering little moments, but not the whole thing very well. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to guess what I'm referring to is for Snatch Game, did you practice? Like, did mm. you legitimately try to, you know, have your have your character down, have your patter, have your jokes, your your quotes, your lines or whatever um and and if you practice, did you did you practice with anybody else? Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, did you have anybody as your feedback, as your audience, to give you the criticism and the accolade at the same time, like to help you? I'm kind of guessing not. For some of them, mm. like I don't think Utica had anybody giving her feedback at all. I don't think Elliot with two T's had anybody giving her feedback on her Rue McClanahan which was really Blanche from the Golden Girls. Um, uh, same thing with uh, Olivia. Like, mm-hmm. the whole bottom row, right? Well, well, with the exception of, of, of Denali, 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 I will is. say this. When I found out Denali was doing Jonathan Van Ness, and I was like, oh, no. I was worried for her. I was like, this, oh. is, this is not going to go well. I just, I mm-hmm. didn't see it. Like, I didn't see her doing it i didn't understand it like i know who the character is and in the end she really did very well with it i was surprised um the only criticism i had was stop touching the hair yes jonathan van ness touches his hair a lot Mm -hmm. but bitch in the edit you are non-stop touching the hair and brushing it every living second and i was like you needed to touch it less. Jonathan does not constantly have his fingers in his hair when he's on camera or when he's around their hair. people. Sorry, their hair. Thank you. So, girl, like, <laughs> you're you're relying too much on that mannerism as a part of the character. Yeah. It would be like Tina doing Richard Simmons and just constantly, like, Moving the arms like with weights. No, 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 no. You have to shake it up. You have to change it. You have to do some different things. So, like that was the only thing. Yeah. So I like that's fair. One out of the bottom five, <laughs> the bottom <laughs> row of five. Like, apparently practiced. The other four, not so much. Um. And I think that was like honestly the the key factor. I think 
Simone practiced Harriet Tubman, I think Gottmik studied Perez Hilton. Mm-hmm. And like everybody even kind of commented that it was scary how good Gottmik was. Yeah. Um, honestly, the best moment of Gottmik was the beginning. Mm-hmm. Where mm-hmm. she kind of used where Gottmik, the drag queen, used her voice and then said about what are we like what are we, you know, filming or recording? And we said, Oh, we're already. And then all of a sudden she's like, oh shit. Or whatever. And she like flipped her voice. And I was like, oh my God, that's like the best ad <laughs> lib in it the good. moment. And I'm sorry, I think Gottmik planned it. Mm-hmm. Like I think Gottmik knew. And decided to have fun with that in that moment. Um, Rosé as Mary Queen of Scots. I wasn't worried. I was very curious to see the delivery. Uh huh. And once she started, I was like, she, she's fine. She's fine. Yeah. She's fine. Yeah. She's Agreed. got it down. She's just going to roll with it. And the thing that kind of got me was how people were like, okay, sidebar, we need to have a moment, people. Uh oh. Well, because, you know, there's, uh, I don't know how else to say this. Like, I I don't even have a sound effect to, like, you know, really kind of go with this. Um, (laughs) When Candy Muse talks about how it is not easy to understand what Rosé is saying as Mary Queen of Scots, <laughs> no sheep on a doe. That's the sound effect. <laughs> yes. yes. Seriously, Queen. Seriously. Of all the ones, that's production. That's producers. <laughs> they baited that son of a bitch. They made her say that, I bet. On from iPad to the confessional, they prompted her in some way to say that because I was like, okay, like, yes, you get on people's nerves. Your 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 presentation, like your overness is is all of that, but you are not a dumb bitch. Like, I'm gonna give you credit where credit is due. You are not a dumb bitch, but you I you I think you fell into that. I think you took that line, that that whole thing, bait, hook, sinker, all of it. Because she's the one of all the queens that talks about how hard it is to understand what Rosé is saying in her Scottish accent. I and I was like, what she's saying, but it's funny. Like, like, who, what did you just say? Like, <laughs> I love Bob on, on <laughs> Saturday, or on, on, on Pit Stop making fun of Candy the whole time. Like, she did the whole little bubbly like commercial as Katie you she like blah, 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 blah. I was like <laughs> stop it honey 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 <laughs> could not believe could not believe she's the one with the sound bite that says I can't understand what she was saying <laughs> my head hurt that's so funny <laughs> <laughs> I was like who the fuck like why are you saying this? What did you just say? That's why I think it was a setup. I think production did like, that to her. And like, I'm not saying they did her dirty. I'm just saying she fell for it. Miss, miss, like miss, um, miss blah 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 blah, blah candy muse. Um, like I, I, I feel and, that. And, and so. here's, and I want to make this clear to everybody. I am not saying this in a bullying way, in a hateful way to, to point out or, or to ridicule or humor her speech impediment. She legitimately, the based, the way that her palate and her mouth is shaped and the, the teeth situation is what creates why she sounds the way she does when she talks. Um, I, I couldn't quite figure that out for a while, but recently, I think it was in this episode, I kind of spotted, because she doesn't really show her top teeth ever. Like, mm. she doesn't smile to show her top teeth. And I think it's because I don't know if she has a tooth missing or if she has a significant gap or, you know, something happening. But I kind of spotted it and I was like, I don't know why, like, like it registered and it kind of clicked. And I was like, oh, OK. Like, but I that was before 
she then turns around and talks about Rosé as Mary Queen of Scots is talking about like the accent and not understanding what she's saying. And I was like, I thought it was hilarious. Oh, I thought it was funny Great. too, but I was Great. shocked. Sure. All the Queens to say it. She's the one I was she's like, the one that gets to say it. Yeah. But then again, I mean, they were already riding this, this funny train because in the workroom, she had no idea who Mary Queen of Scots was. and didn't believe it was a real person. Mm hmm. And then in that moment, I was saying out loud to the television, thank you, failed education state. Like, <laughs> way to go, kids. Mm hmm. Come on. So, yeah. So like basically, I, I, I was eye rolling like, did y'all practice? Which is more, I guess, basically for the four in the bottom row. Like, that didn't do that well. Because mm -hmm. everybody else did pretty good, I felt. Um, I loved how Rosé and Gottmik played. Like, they yeah. were side by side. And so Paris has the phone and Gottmik, like, leans in for the selfie thing. Or, like, Rosé leads into Gottmik. I mean, I was just was like, that's fun. Yeah. You know, to kind of, like, see that. Um, Simone, <laughs> not, being on, not being on set in the very beginning, I was so worried. I was like, do not make this another Kamora Hall. Do not make this another Kamora Hall moment. <laughs> I am going to be so upset and irritated if your ass is late to set like and we just had victoria park chalk parker whatever that it was about like show up late for the game show like <laughs> as a contestant not as a celebrity and here the bitch is hiding uh-huh talk about like that meta was... thinking like uh-huh through who the character is <laughs> and she comments about all these white people and i was <laughs> like and i was like yeah, Starting out was, strong. Uh, I'm not uh -huh. going to be too worried anymore. She, uh -uh. she said. I it. was. I, I again, like I said, I was concerned when when she chose this character. Yeah. Or chose this person. But she got me like from the beginning. Did it go maybe a little over? Maybe, maybe a little bit, just a little bit. But it was enough. Yeah. So. Okay. If you have thoughts that you want to share with us, there's plenty of ways you could do that. You could go to our blog, CubsOutloud.com. You could leave a message there. You could send us an email to CubsOutloud at gmail.com. You could also call us. Leave a voicemail message. We would love to listen to it. Mm -hmm. And that number is 361-COL-TALK, 361-265-8255. Uh, online social media outlets, pretty much all of them. Just type in the word Cubs Out Loud. Uh, if you would like to join our chat on Telegram, uh, which is a lot like Messenger, but better, uh, you could go to tinyurl.com slash telegram hyphen C-O-L-D-R. Uh, mm -hmm. If you would like to know about the regular series episodes when they're going to be recorded live and airing to YouTube, you can go to tinyurl.com slash calendar hyphen C-O-L. Uh, if you are interested in the things that we have as far as merchandise goes, uh, you can go to Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. David and I are both wearing Consent is our foreplay, uh, the Drag Pride edition. So yeah. uh, it's a fun shirt if you want, you know, something to wear out and about. Uh, you can also become a patron at Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Cubs Out Loud. For as little as a dollar a month, you get the full episode. You can hear the pre-show and the post-show. Uh, some of the behind the scenes and the things that don't make it in. Mm -hmm. You uh, also could, if you just want to send us a donation, you can do that. You can go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud and send any donation amount uh, as a one-time thing. We would greatly appreciate it. Um, if you want to, you can go to iTunes and you can rate us five stars is our preference. Thank you. Um, and leave a nice comment on there. Uh, you can obviously subscribe pretty much anywhere that podcasts are available. C-O-L-D-R, Cubs Out Loud Drag Race that we do here, is a separate uh, RSS feed as far as the podcast goes. So you're welcome to do that. And, Mr. Damon, where would they find you online? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub 79 on most bear-related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. But you will find some drag things and a lot of porn. Well then, <laughs> if you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabra73. However, 
on Twitter, I have a separate profile uh, for all things drag. So it's G A R B E A R seven three D R A G. And with that, we're gonna say goodbye as uh, another queen has to leave us behind. Bye, flamingo. <laughs> See y'all. <laughs>